Britain's beaches are about to get a lot busier, but that's not necessarily good news for the birds and marine life. Now there's a new set of guidelines to help visitors behave responsibly. Our South West England correspondent Jenny Kumar can tell us more from a rather beautiful location, Jenny, this morning. You're at St Ives. What a spot and the weather's kind. Yep, it's looking glorious and the forecast it's more fine weather over the bank holiday and into the half term. Expect it to be really busy here. And it's that interaction between the people that come here and the local marine life that's the focus of this wildlife code. And what we're expecting to see is what you will generally see around this area is lots of kind of seals using the beach, on the sea, on the rocks. And that happens across the coast here. And there have been certain problems and someone who can talk to me a bit more about what that's like is Tony Farrell who runs a guided walking tour business. Tony, what kind of problems have you seen? Um, I don't see so many problems with walkers. Uh, they're normally fairly well up on the country code and on the marine code anyway. It's more visitors who do not normally live in a maritime or a marine context who aren't always sure of what uh, what's good behaviour and bad behaviour when it comes to marine life. Problems we have in, in St Ives particularly are gulls. People will feed gulls and that makes them quite aggressive and of course we have a lot of takeaway food outlets and they attack people who are obviously eating takeaway food. Uh, last, last summer there was the case of a, a man who beat a gull to death on the beach because it actually stole some of his food and that caused outrage. It's getting too close to wildlife. Uh, some of the grey seals will sometimes come into the harbour. They're naturally inquisitive um, and people have taken to feeding them with fish, even swimming with them, really forgetting that they are wild animals and one suspects one day there may be a, really a, quite a, 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 a tragic accident when somebody will lose a hand or just, get, just getting too close, I think, is the biggest problem of all. That's great. Thank you, Tony. And uh, someone who's played a role in developing this code is Sue Sayer from a local SEAL charity. Sue, um, what are you hoping this will achieve? So we know from our data in SEAL Research Trust <clears throat> that SEALs are disturbed 68% of the time when people are present. So we also know that the solutions are very simple and the messages are about being quiet, slow, keeping a low profile and being distant over 100 metres away. So we welcome this code hugely. It's a great code. It's a single hymn sheet for us all to sing off and have, you know, a reference document for. And, uh, you know, it'll enable us to actually see the best views of wildlife, which are them doing natural wild things. It's a very friendly code and we really welcome it a lot. And. Uh, getting the best views that are privileged. We're so lucky in Cornwall to have amazing wildlife and we want people to enjoy that. So um, we like people to point the finger at themselves and say, have I done the right thing? Am I 100 metres away? And if the answer is always yes, the problem goes away tomorrow. So this code has been published, but how will the public actually be able to to have a read and, and get hold of it. So no. it's a very good question. This is just the first step. This is the code wording agreed. It's on the .gov website. Uh, you just Google um, the DEFRA Marine and Coastal Wildlife Code. In the future, it's going to be used by other organisations to produce resources that will inform people about, like the Countryside Code, about how to, um, you know, best practice around wildlife when you're out and about around the coast. That's great, Sue. Thank you for speaking to us this morning so that's the picture here in St Ives and now it's time for the news travel and weather where you are.